So we see now uh, the data wall presentation with analytics creator by Exeta. Yeah, so uh, Timo, you can hand over the uh, control. Yes, thank you, Peter. So hello, everybody from my side. Um, I'm going to share my screen first. Yeah. Hello, everybody. My name is Timo Stroh. I'm working as a manager at Exeta. We are uh, we are mid-size uh, consulting company from Germany. Um, first of all, our agenda. Short introduction to Exeta. Then we will present our showcase that we have implemented with Analytics Creator. Um, my colleague is telling something about the data board architecture and the Azure architecture that the components that we have placed in our solution. And uh, finally, the dashboard was, was created with Power BI. First to our company, we are a mid-sized consulting company. We have we were founded 2005 in Karlsruhe. Um, we have more than 1,000 employees now. And we are placed across the Germany and in Switzerland and Slovakia. Our headquarters is still placed in Karlsruhe. And this is our team. Um, we are the business unit for Microsoft Platform and Technologies. So we're covering, covering everything about uh, technologies in Microsoft stack. So we have data scientists, um, we have a big unit for unified communication and collaboration. This means Microsoft 365, especially SharePoint solutions, Teams Office solutions. We have the software development department. And my team is the data engineering team. We are covering everything about data and analytics. So we are using the whole Microsoft technology stack like SQL Server, Azure, comp Azure components, um, especially Azure Synapse for data analytics and machine learning services for our customers. And yeah, today we wanted to show you something about uh, we have done with Analytics Creator. We can partner with, with Dimitri and Peter, and uh, we're using Analytics Creator uh, for uh, as a project enabler for our customers because you can have quick solutions and very easy and structured. So I'm going to hand over now to my colleague, Mr. Bremen. Max, are you there? Hi, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take over the screen. One moment. Yeah, um, so I would like to show you the showcase now. Um, um, to, and within the showcase, we used uh, the analytics creator. Um, I'll just give a short introduction um, which technologies we used um, and the data modeling techniques techno um, technique we used. And afterwards, I'll hand over to Natalia, who will give a um, brief overview of um, how she implemented the showcase. Um, but yeah, so why did we create a showcase? Um, basically, our MPT data engineering team here at Exeta is working on a demo environment uh, to demonstrate to our customers uh, what technologies we are working with in the Azure environment and what our best practices are for modern data warehouses. Um, we also want to develop ourselves as a team. Um, so we're just not just using it for our clients and uh, to demonstrate for our clients, but also for us to develop ourselves uh, within the Azure environment. Um, what we basically do, is we support our customers in building uh, their analytics platform in the Azure environment from data integration to platform provisioning um, to, to analytics use case implementation. So it may be classical BI or advanced analytics. Um, so that's why we um, built in our first um, classic BI showcase, uh, um, a classic data warehouse uh, within the Azure environment. Um, here, the requirement was that we pulled structured data from a blob storage, um, integrated data via data factory um, with an ETL process, um, store the whole thing um, in a data warehouse with the help of um, yeah, Azure SQL DB, and visualize and provide the data um, via Power BI. Um, since we want the process 
large amounts of data in future, um, we thought data vault would be the best modeling technique because it gives us the possibility to, to process data in parallel. Um, but I'll tell you more about this um, in a moment. Um, but to create our ETL process in Data Factory, out of our data warehouse in Azure SQL DB, and our tabular model in Power BI, um, we used the analytics creator to speed up the process and, and get ourselves up and running quickly. Um, since there are always reoccurring tasks um, when building a data warehouse, uh, we want to use the analytics creator so that we can define our best practices and later on be able to quickly implement it um, at our customers. Um, yeah, so Data Vault. Um, so if you haven't heard of Data Vault, um, Data Vault is a scalable data warehousing technique. Um, it, it allows to create a, like a data warehouse incrementally and therefore minimizes the effort when adding new data sources to a data warehouse. Um, this is a high level structure of uh, where the data warehouse, where the data vault is placed. Um, the data is like usually in a data warehouse coming from different data sources, it's first staged and then it's loaded into something called a raw vault. Um, on top of the raw vault, you can have a business vault as well. Um, in this case, we didn't um, put a business vault. Um, we put it into a data mart where we have all the, the, the business logic um, and the calculations. Um, the raw vault makes the makes the data available to several data marts, and it's just a big construct of the source data um, available. So, what are the main components of of a raw vault? Um, you've got a hub uh, which stores business keys. Um, business keys hardly change are are the most stable. Um, keys are separated from attribute data and stored in a key table called hubs. Um, and the hubs, um, yeah are very unlikely to change the business keys. Um, you always have the metadata coming with it and a surrogate key. Um, so you can always, uh, you always know um, where the key came from and where the key came from the system. Um, these hubs are then connected via links. So link tables. Um, these tables contain transactions between hubs. Um, they also contain surrogate keys and the metadata associated to the key. So you again know when at what point of time um, the, the the connection or the relationship between the hubs um, occurred. So you, al you always have a very good um, data lineage within the system. Um, hubs and links um, basically create a data model of, of the relationships, um, but do not contain descriptive attributes. Um, these attributes are um, stored in satellite tables. Um, the attributes come with metadata as well, so you again know where the data is coming from, when it came in, and until when the data is valid. So you can always create a history, uh, creating like a history of data at a given point in time. Um, you also have uh, reference tables, um, which are used for redundant storage, um, but which are frequently referenced. Um, so this may be a business description of a value, um, like a currency. Um, this is a very simple sales model example of what uh, a raw model could look like. Um, first, we separate important attributes into hubs. Um, so in this case, um, the important attributes are the customer and the order. So if I order something online, um, I, I get my own customer number and uh, there will be an own order number. Um, these keys usually shouldn't change or, or must not change. Um, so these get put into the hub. And um, the descriptive data for these keys um, will be put into the satellite. So my name, my address, maybe my gender, my age uh, will be put into the satellites. And um, using the link table, um, the, the business keys are linked together. And um, then I know when the transaction was happening. Um, then there may be the reference table, which says in which currency, for example, I bought um, a product or whatever. So this is just a, a very uh, simple example um, of a data vault model. Um, the processing, um, the ETL is quite different um, than to the other um, data modeling techniques. Um, there, there, there's, the, there's the data vault uh, 
1.0 and 2.0. Um, in 1.0, you've got you basically have uh, first that you load um, the business keys um, into the hubs, and then you load the links and the uh, and the satellites. Uh, with 2.0, you can basically process everything in parallel. Um, since you've got um, hash keys or um, natural business keys, um, and this is what makes the raw vault so great because you can load everything independently, making it uh, making the loading process a lot quicker and less dependent on and the other steps. Um, so you've got so so you're allowed to load data simultaneously and which gives you a concurrent ETL. Um, but yeah, in the end, uh, you obviously want to report the data. Um, since there are many relationships between data vault, you'd have to do a lot of joins, uh, which is not optimized for business intelligence tools. Um, so commonly you put uh, a data mart uh, on top of a data um, data vault um, to as a presentation layer. And you, could, you usually use the hubs and satellites as dimensions and the links and satellites as facts. And um, yeah, in this layer, the, in the data mart layer, the business logic and the data cleaning can be done to present the data in the way um, that meets the um, user expectations. So everything before in the raw vault is, is untouched, and that's what makes the, the process so quick um, because you, you don't make any transformations, uh, you don't make any cleaning. Um, that happens on the data mart level. And then, yeah, the reporting is done using those uh, dimensional data marts. So now the question is, uh, when when do you use data vault? Um, basically, if, if you have large projects with uh, with a lot of data sources um, leading to an enormous data integration challenge, then data vault will be the right choice since it's fairly flexible um, with, with its structure and it's easily adaptable to change. And you get lots and you got you don't get as lost as quickly in the structure because it has good um, data lineage. Um, and if you want to load large amounts of data, it can be processed in parallel, um, so making it suitable for large data sources. Um, but if you not, if you have like a small, medium sized analytics requirements um, with a few data sources, then using um, data vault may be um, overkill. <laughs> um, but yeah. So much to to the raw vault uh, and the data vault and what we do as a team. Um, our use case that we implemented uh, in our classical data warehouse was um, taxi analytics data sets. Um, I think if you've worked with Azure, you've, you've probably heard of it before. Um, but it basically contains information about trips uh, made by yellow taxis in New York. Um, so how long was the trip? Uh, how much did it cost? Uh, where was the starting point of the trip? Where was the finishing point? And um, in the first step, we basically wanted to do a descriptive analytics um, to identify what were the peak times of the day um, or of the week, um, see the best and worst locations within New York um, where, where taxis can stand during the day. And we also brought in some weather data um, within the system um, to see how the weather affects um, the different uh, locations or basically the the demand of the, of the of the taxis uh, in a day and um, our colleague also did some predictive analytics um, uh, which we won't be showing today um, but yeah i'll just pass it on to natalia now um, how she will show you how she implemented it um, using the analytics creator thank you max and uh, now i will show share my screen right and my name is Natalia, and today I will walk you through our showcase. First, we will take a look at our architecture, and then we'll check uh, the systems uh, that we used. Um, right. Um, as you can see, uh, we worked with different systems uh, from the Asia stack and, of course, uh, with Analytics Creator. First, we have uh, blob storage. Uh, there we hold our source data. In this case, we used uh, just simple CSV files and parquet files. Then uh, we have uh, an ETL process 
which are realized in Asia Data Factory pipelines. And then the data will be stored in Asia SQL database. Finally, uh, the tabular model uh, is created for uh, Power BI services and the dashboard will be uh, created on top of uh, the tabular model to vis visualize our data. Um, uh, attention, the spoiler alert, uh, the pipelines, the database structure and the tabular model will be created by analytics creator automatically. So let's uh, take a look at the system it's themselves. So what we uh, have here, uh, first of all, it's uh, the blob storage. Uh, I use Microsoft uh, Azure Storage Explorer to manage our blob storage. It's very simple. Uh, we have here a storage account and underneath this account we have a blob container uh, which holds our uh, source data. Uh, it has only two folders uh, to hold our dimensions. It's uh, very simple CSV files. For example, uh, we will take a look on uh, one of them. Uh, the location, it's comma separated a file that holds uh, the data about the location in New York, like uh, Manhattan and Bronx, Queens, uh, whatever. Um, then we have uh, fact uh, data. Uh, we have uh, data for the January 2018. It's uh, about 20 parquet files, uh, which we won't uh, able to open because it's not very really human readable. Um, anyway, uh, these 20 files hold the data for about 8 million data sets. Um, as um, Max mentioned already, um, we have the data about the New York taxi and the trips uh, they made. So how many passengers were transported, from which location to where, uh, it's all called pickup and drop off locations. Um, the same uh, about the time and date. How long was the trip, the distance uh, about, and some data about the costs, how much uh, was the total amount, and uh, how much uh, tips uh, the taxi drivers uh, got. Anyway, we just uh, walk to the next step. It's uh, analytics creator. We already created the model here. But uh, don't worry, I will walk uh, through um, this model, at least uh, the most interesting points of it. So um, the first, we create uh, the connector to uh, the blob storage that I just uh, showed you. It's nothing special, uh, storage account name and the Asia key uh, to connect to it. And uh, then we can create the sources. I just zoom it up. Um, the sources definition are pretty easy as well. For example, right here we define what the connector, uh, the blob storage of course, uh, then the path of this um, file and uh, the file uh, definition is, in, uh, is implemented automatically, so it will uh, transport it from the file itself, so nothing uh, manual uh, you need to adjust here. The only thing you need to um, adjust is uh, the which uh, column should you use as a primary key. Um, that's the only thing you uh, need to, to define here. 
Um, maybe we'll take a look uh, at the source file for the fact table. We use here um, the directory and we read from there all the parquet files. Uh, once again, the file structure will be imported automatically, so no need to adjust here as well. Um, the next um, stage is the staging layer. The staging layer, we need um, um, we need uh, to quickly load the data from our source system and uh, to release it. So basically, uh, what we have here uh, are the import, so-called import tables, where the data from the source files will be loaded and uh, the views on top of these uh, uh, tables. Uh, we will just take a quick look um, again at one of the import table. So it is import table. The structure will be, uh, we get it uh, from the source file. So nothing to do for us here. And um, yeah, the best thing, um, this uh, import table and the views, uh, it's, it's everything created automatically um, via wizard, um, they have wizard, so you already um, took a look uh, how to use it. So uh, the thing here, you can uh, choose what type of data warehouse house you want to use. You can uh, choose, of course, uh, the classical one, the star schema, but uh, for our demonstration, we wanted to check out uh, the data vault model, so we uh, choose just uh, to create the data world model. Um, the best thing here, um, uh, if you uh, use the data world model, the hash keys will be created automatically. So here you see uh, this uh, little hash sign that means uh, that uh, every table has or every um, Data set has its own um, hash key, um, exactly. As I mentioned already, the columns uh, will be imported from the source files and uh, the calculated columns. Uh, we see here the automatically created hash key and some columns that we decided to add, for example, for the location, we created two, three extra columns to get uh, the name of the country, United States, and uh, of the city, the New York City. Um, at uh, the fact table uh, level, it's um, interesting as well. The hash keys will be created for each foreign key uh, column. So don't forget uh, to edit as well, because um, after all, you will need them to um, create the relationship between the tables. Um, right, the next uh, one is a pers persisted staging layer. This layer, uh, we need uh, to implement the historization of our data warehouse. So each data set has uh, two extra date columns uh, there, the valid from and valid till, and it shows if uh, the data set is up to date or has a historical data in it. Um, so it's, of course, it's um, created automatically as well by a data warehouse wizard. Um, but um, the next step, is um, the core layer. Core layer is an uh, actual uh, business layer. And at this point, we're moving from data vault model to a star schema. So the data is held uh, in the data vault um, 
tables and uh, the core layer is implemented uh, via different views on top of these uh, tables uh, using the star schema. At this point, uh, we exactly the, the core layer is uh, actually created automatically as well. We just added uh, two dimensions, uh, predefined dimensions for uh, date and time uh, to use it uh, further. The only thing at uh, this point, uh, we need to create a um, connection between fact and dimension tables. So we need to define which keys will be used to join each uh, table. Uh, to show you, it's maybe the best uh, to get to the fact view and to um, look inside the SQL SQL. And here you see how the fact table um, is uh, connected to the different dimension tables via left join. Yeah. Uh, the next step is data mat layer, the last thing. Um, it's actually uh, the tabular model, which will be deployed at Power BI server. Uh, and uh, on top of this uh, tabular model, we create uh, the dashboard. So guess what? It's created automatically as well. We just uh, needed some manual adjustments uh, for it. For example, you can see here we have two um, location dimensions because we have uh, the pickup location and the drop off location. So the same uh, thing goes to uh, date and time dimensions. We just uh, needed to conform which keys um, will be used in uh, for which table. Um, the rest of the dimension are uh, joined automatically to the fact uh, table. Um, exactly at, at this point, you need to decide what uh, columns one do you want to use at uh, your tabular model. For example, um, we decided to hide every key columns because it's not very useful to analyze uh, this data. Um, at this point, we create the measures at the fact table as well. We just uh, take a quick look there. Um, we have uh, two options to create uh, an aggregation. We can um, use the predefined aggregation fun functions like summarization, for example, to uh, calculate the revenue, we just summarize the total, uh, total amount of the money we paid for uh, each trip. Um, the, another option is to write your own DEX statement, uh, for example, to calculate the revenue per distance. We just uh, write this uh, little statement. We divide the revenue by trip distance. Very easy. Um, anyway, when uh, the whole model is created at Analytics Creator, you uh, um, deploy this model. Um, during the deployment, three very important things will be created. Um, first of all, the database structure will be created. So every table in the view, which you see uh, here, starting from the staging layer to the core, core layer will be created at the database. Um, so um, let's just take a look at our database. Yep. Um, exactly, we use uh, the Asia SQL database uh, for this case. 
uh, here will be the database will be created uh, automatically no involvement from our side here uh, so all the tables uh, will be created for example the import tables i uh, just showed you for the location or for the fact uh, table um, the tables for the historization tables will be created as well and uh, the news views will be created for example uh, to the data mart um, views which uh, show our our data for the fact and the whole dimension things uh, first of all um, the tables are empty, so no data inside of it. So to fill these tables, we need the ETL process. In our case, uh, we choose the Asia Data Factory to create our pipelines. So the pipelines uh, will be created automatically as well. Uh, what we have here, we have the data sets. So the connection to uh, sources and the tables in the data warehouse. And we have several pipelines. We just take a look at the main pipeline. It's uh, pretty straightforward. We have, um, first of all, we have the, we, 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 uh, we fill um, the import table with the data from the sources and then the historization take place. Um, it is um, that's we use uh, the data vault model, so um, we can um, divide the dimension and fact ETL process, so that they can run in parallel. If we start this uh, workflow um, pipeline, then our tables in data warehouse will be filled uh, with data. Uh, the last thing uh, which will be created during the deployment is uh, the tabular model from for the Power BI. So all the tables here from the data mark layer uh, will be created in Power BI. For example, we can connect uh, via Management Studio and we can see that this model has different tables, fact table, one fact table and several dimension tables, exactly as uh, we sh uh, I showed you in the uh, analytics creator. And the same thing um, you can see at the Power BI server. So th this data set is exactly this tabular model. On top of this model, we can create um, the report. For example, we created this yellow taxi dashboard. It's a pretty simple uh, dashboard. Yeah. Uh, what we have here, we uh, just selected or filtered the data um, for three days, just randomly picked uh, three days from the January uh, 2018. And the data will be filtered here. So uh, we have here the revenue, the trade count, the chart that shows us the revenue uh, and revenue per distance. For example, we can see that the revenue per distance uh, drops uh, on Sunday very heavily. Um, then we have a chart, line chart, that shows us trip count flow along the day. Uh, for example, we can see that at eight in the morning on Friday, a lot of people take uh, a cab, but on the Sunday and Saturday, at the, this time, maybe the half of the 
people take uh, the taxi or need the taxi. Um, then we have a chart that shows us the most popular locations in New York, for example, East Village or Union Square. And finally, we have here uh, the map that shows us uh, the New York City and the trip count data um, from here. Um, for example, we can see the Manhattan Island here. We can zoom as well and um, see the data from East Village or maybe some Union Square data from Friday, Saturday. Of course, we are dealing with Power BI, so uh, any kind of filtering, cross filtering um, can be done here very easily. So we just see the data for Friday or we uh, want to see the data from Union Square. Uh, so every chart will be adjusted uh, as you go, or you maybe want to add them next Monday to check up, check out the data. So everything uh, you need is um, there. So um, the last point I wanted to discuss with you is um, <laughs> it's uh, how I like to work uh, with Analytics Creator. So in my opinion, Analytics Creator is a very powerful tool and it's uh, pretty easy to use. There is uh, a lot of predefined functions and features that um, uh, make your work with Analytics Creator very easy. And as you uh, see, um, the different kinds of objects will be created um, automatically by Analytics Creator. It's a database, ETL pipelines, the tabula model for analytics. So if you don't spend uh, much time for the creation of these three things manually, you will save a lot of time and uh, a big amount of uh, money. And um, exactly here are our contacts. So feel free to um, write us or uh, to get in touch with us. Uh, we have a LinkedIn like sync uh, accounts as well. So don't hesitate. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you. Thanks a lot. It was a great presentation. Thank you also to uh, Maximilian and Timo. That was really great. Um, yeah, maybe uh, there are some uh, questions right now uh, we, we can answer. So uh, yeah, we have uh, time enough for the Q and A. Um, yeah. One simple question to accept a team. Yeah. I'm interested if in any of those procedures or analytics creates or did you execute or did you do any data cleaning of this taxi data set? Data cleaning, um, let me, uh, no, no, not really. Because uh, the um, uh, dimension files are very simple, so they just have uh, two, three columns and not a lot of um, data sets. In the fact tables, uh, we didn't clean the data as well, no. Like, for example, if, you, if you're having unusual distances, unusual hour rates and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So. No, at this point we didn't, um, but it's a good point. Maybe we will um, expand our model to um, involve this kind of things. Thank you.